Hey everyone, Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Today we're going to talk about substrates. And uh, this question gets asked on the Q&A and in store and stuff like that every single day. People want to start planet tanks, but they don't know what to use, what to start with, things like that. So we're going to get to the bottom of it. We're going to talk about things like a dirted tank. We're going to talk about things like ADA soil. We're going to talk about normal gravel, all these types of things. So make sure you stay tuned. All right. So first, we got to establish some uh, basic truths or facts or something like that before we start talking about individual substrates. Um, so that we have our grounds to build on. So first, when we say the word substrate, we basically mean gravel or something that's going to go at the bottom of the aquarium to root plants into, okay? Uh, the next thing to know is we have plants that get most of their nutrients from the water, and then we have plants that get most of their nutrients from the substrate or gravel. And I would say most plants are what we call a water column feeder. And that would be, you know, things like most of your stem plants, um, your floating plants, things like that. So I would almost say most plants are a water column feeder. Anubias, java fern, all those things as well. All right. And then we have things that like to feed off the gravel. So sword plants, valisneria, cryptocorns. Uh, dwarf baby tears, all the real high-end carpeting plants typically, okay? And so what we, know, what we need to know is this. Anything that feeds off the gravel needs to get nutrients in the gravel. Anything that's a water column feeder is going to get the majority of its nutrients from the water. Now, both the plants can also utilize what they don't prefer. So a water column feeding plant can still get some nutrients from the gravel, and vice versa. Something that really wants everything from the gravel can also get some from the water. It's just not as efficient at it. So, so let's talk about why we might want uh, a plant uh, substrate. So when we talk about planted tank substrates, mostly all the marketing is going to go towards helping the plants grow. And so I'm not choosing any one product over another. I just happen to have this sitting around because I got it to try out. And I haven't even tried it yet. So it could be garbage. But the premise is going to be all the same on a lot of these things. So here we've got, you know, Aquasolum uh, by Seachem. It's basically Seachem's version of ADA Aquasoil. It's a clay-based, um, you know, it's got lots of... Uh, peat and things like that in it lowers pH softens the water that's because there's so much organic material in here it's gonna rot essentially but it's little clay balls and it's used in shrimp tanks and planted tanks now why would we use this one it's full of nutrients and so uh, at the beginning we're gonna start our tanks off and they're gonna have a lot of of nutrients to draw from. Now that's great if we're using plants that want to feed from the gravel. But let's say you put that down in your aquarium and you're using java fern, anubia, some floating plants, and then some stem plants like Rotala indica and Pogostem and Stellatus octopus. So now you've got this more expensive substrate that is pretty much doing very little for your aquarium. Now it's I won't say it's not helping at all, but at the same time, if you were on a budget, your money was better spent somewhere else. Conversely, if you were using something like Dwarf Baby Tears or, um, let's say, Star Guiding Repens or Dwarf Hair Grass or anything like that, or Amazon Swords, Cryptocorns, anything that's a heavy root feeder, they would be able to utilize this really well, okay? So... Uh, what we do need to know about substrates like this and uh, things like a dirted tank, know this, that just like a farm where we're growing, let's say, corn or something like that, the land has to be rested. And we need to do that in an aquarium as well. So we're going to, we have, right now we have this super rich, vitamin rich substrate. We're going to put plants into it they're gonna start consuming those nutrients. 
typically somewhere between that one month, or not one month, sorry, that one year and two year mark, it's going to start exhausting that substrate, meaning there's no nutrients left where the plants are. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find a way to get minerals back into it. And that could be something like root tabs, like we've got right here. Seachem makes some. There's some other brands too. And we might put that down in the gravel or substrate to remineralize it. We could also swap the plants out, take out all the root feeders, put in water column feeders, and then long term, after a few years, there'd be enough fish poop and stuff like that that worked its way down into it that it would be now nutrient rich again. Uh, we're going to run into that same problem with a dirted tank. We put dirt down, we put gravel or sand over it, eventually we deplete the nutrients in the dirt, and we have the exact same problem. And unfortunately, that's how nature works. There's no way around it. So like maybe in your garden or at your farm, every year you put new topsoil on it to bring more minerals, and you amend the soil to bring more minerals in. And we have to do the same thing with these soils that we're going to use, things like this, uh, to reinvigorate uh, it. So know that that is a decent choice if you're doing plants that require heavy root feeding. Now, let's take it to the complete opposite spectrum. Let's say you're doing java ferns, anubias, all kinds of stem plants. You could also just use basic aquarium gravel. It could be blue, it could be pink, it could be natural colored. They would all kind of grow it the same because they're not really utilizing it. And that being said, you could also put root tabs in it and start putting minerals into that gravel if you needed to. Um, so it's, in my opinion, it's not super duper important what substrate you use, but that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is to explain how different substrates work. Um, so now let's look at a different substrate. Let's look at like a very fine sand, like uh, uh, play sand or anything you'd buy at like Home Depot. It's going to be really cheap and really fine. Those typically don't grow plants very well because they compact so much that the roots have a hard time penetrating it and growing and collecting nutrients. Even the stem plants can have a rough time in that. So I don't recommend that for a planted tank. Uh, let's hit some other things that are uh, important, I think. Things like EcoComplete. That's a clay-based substrate, kind of almost fired clay, if you will. And it comes wet, and so it's sitting in fertilizer. That's what it's doing. And it has what's called a high cation factor. And what that means is it's technical mumbo-jumbo for it can hold a lot of liquid fertilizer in the clay particles. So when we put that into an aquarium, we have our root feeding plants feeding there. All we have to do is put nutrients into the water and the water will deliver nutrients back to that clay and the clay will grab onto some of it and help deliver it to the roots. And so something like EcoComplete, while expensive, can be beneficial, but I still find over long periods of time, it becomes much less effective than it was when it was at the beginning. But you know, if it's your first plant in a tank, maybe it makes some sense to make sure you have some success for the first year, uh, get some stuff under your belt, and then you can start having the problems that you'll have long term, and you'll know you'll have to mineralize it and really work on it. Um, what else do we have for substrates? We have things like fluorite. What do fluorites do? Typically, they are high in iron, which is good for plants that need a lot of iron. Uh, they're kind of a clay base. They're real light and fluffy, so I don't like planting it at a whole lot, but it can be done. I personally wouldn't invest a ton of money doing that. Um, if I was going to buy a substrate and I wanted a good plant substrate, I feel like it's between a mineralized soil, so whether it's um, uh, something like Aquasolum by Seachem, maybe ADA soil, something like that, or an EcoComplete. I personally would choose EcoComplete most times because I actually like working with it. You can gravel vac it a bit. It keeps plants down well. It doesn't alter the pH either, which I like. Now, if you needed to bring the pH down, let's say for some crystal shrimp or something like that, then a soil-based thing is going to be great. But for me, I already have such soft acidic water. It would be bad for me. Um, so we're going to assume... 
uh, that you've watched the other video I have on plant deficiencies. When we start talking about lack of calcium and magnesium and hardness in the water in general, that can be very apparent. So, you know, so now let's take a look at the substrate. We know it's basically soil and clay. It's not going to have a lot of uh, minerals in it to harden water because it says it softens water and lowers pH. So it's not going to have a lot of calcium, not going to have a lot of magnesium, um, and not going to have a lot of manganese. So that's a problem because if we used all of this and we are not putting any source of that into the water, we're going to get that deficiency, right? So now it starts making some sense to start mixing some substrates, which, you know, if, as long as you know what you're mixing in, it can make some sense. Just like we might mix in into our garden some dolomite or... Um, you know, something like that to help add some minerals back to the soil, we can do the same thing with an aquarium gravel. So here, I just it's an empty bag. I used it in another build. If you haven't watched that, it's a tank on African cichlids. This is gray coast. It's got aragonite in it, and it assists in stabilizing calcium and alkalinity. So there, you know, and also you can see it's high in magnesium. So what if we were to take a product like this and a product like this and start adding some of this to this, now we've created a substrate that is going to add lots of minerals, you know, in the way of, let's say, nitrogen, potassium, that type of thing. And now we're in inviting in the calcium and magnesium. So now we've got, kind of got a good substrate we were building. And that's typically what you do in the plant world outside of aquariums is you buy a mix or you mix it yourself based on what your soil is and stuff like that. And that's a big thing everyone skips over in the aquarium hobby. When you're doing a garden at home or your lawn or something like that, they always recommend get a soil sample. See what you're missing or what you naturally have in your soil. Then amend it to put in what you don't have. And we should really be doing the same thing with our aquarium water figuring out, do I have a lot of hardness? Do I live in Texas and it's off the chart? Well, then don't add some gray coast or crushed coral or anything like that. It's going to try and buffer that even more. But if you're in Seattle, like me, we have no hardness in the water at all. And if I don't do something, it's always problematic for me. So the goal is here to teach you how to think about the substrate you want to use and devise a plan that we think will work well for your water. Most often, people start by going, well, I like the way that guy's tank looks. I'm going to buy all the stuff he has, and I'll get the same results. You won't. It, your water structure will be much different than someone else. Even if you say, well, we tested both waters. They look identical. They're not. They're identical in the things you tested for. But, like, for instance, when you use a... Uh, a test kit to test the hardness of water, it's mostly testing just calcium and magnesium. It doesn't pick up on anything else. And so you could have water that is all calcium or all magnesium, and it could be missing one of the two. And even though you're saying, I have 180 parts per million, and so does this gentleman. He could have 180 parts per million magnesium, and you have 180 parts per million calcium, and that's how it could be drastically different. So take each almost each aquarium, but you know, each person really should be doing their own. Here's what I'm going to try. And so in the dirted tank method, which was all the rage a few years ago, and most people have found that, okay, it's messy, works for a little while. I had some success, but it's not the end all be all. Most people found they still had to add in either some crushed coral, maybe some clay, things like that, to mineralize that soil more than just what the soil had. Because organic soil typically was very acidic and more towards something like this without the calcium, magnesium, and manganese than other stuff. We know plants need it. So, and we just spent, you know, over 10 minutes talking about substrate. And most of that doesn't affect most of the plants we're going to put into the aquarium. So like in the tank behind me, very few of those plants are actually utilizing the substrate for their food. They're using the water column. Um, 
but realize that it can be a very important or not important part of your planted aquarium. But most people think if I don't spend this $200 on substrate or $100, depending on the size of your tank, I won't be successful. And that's just not true. If you know the plan of what plants you want to do, you can be very strategic in it. Like if you know you're only going to have one plant that feeds off the roots, to me it makes sense to put in uh, a substrate you like and then mineralize that part of the substrate where that plant's growing with root tabs or something like that as opposed to spending lots of money to fill the whole aquarium with something you're not going to use. Um, likewise, you know, you could make water very acidic using some of those soils when you didn't want to. Maybe you're doing a planted African cichlid tank. And for like that tank, that's why I have this great coast. Is I planted everything in this. Um, so as long as you avoid extremes, you know, you don't want to use really big, like, uh, river pebbles to plant your plants in. That'll be rough. You also don't want to use crazy fine sand either because that's typically going to hinder you. I've got some coarse sand I'm using back there. It works really well. And in general, my statement to people is plants grow all around the world and the substrates and makeup of them are all different. And so, you know, most things are going to work in an aquarium, but the bigger issues are what did that plant actually want? If you're building a tank around... Uh, let's say pogo stem and helferi, it's a hard water plant and most people try to grow it with things like this, an ADA soil, and they struggle because it melts down because there's not enough calcium uh, in the water to support it. And so even though they go, well, I've spent $1,000 on CO2, lighting, plant soil, uh, liquid fertilizers, all this, they're missing the most important thing of they're putting a square peg into a round hole it's not gonna work because you haven't set up an environment where it can work and so this video is more about the entire thinking of substrate as opposed to me recommending any one and I'm sure people ask what substrate should I use for this and the reality is I can't answer that question without knowing the structure of your water and all the plants you want to do and stuff like that so realize I'm not necessarily promoting any one brand uh, I've given my preferences, but I've done pretty much everything in everything, and it can be done. So even though I say I don't really like fine sand and it's really hard, it can be done, but most people go, wow, I wouldn't, I'd wouldn't. i rather not have to make it that hard on myself. So uh, make sure you tune in to the other Plant 101 episodes. We go over lots of things like lighting fertilizers we go over allergies we go over you know plant deficiencies and things like that these are all basic building blocks to help you actually have a planet tank that's going to thrive and understand the logic behind it as opposed to just telling you do a plus b plus c and hope for d we'll teach you how to arrive at a and how you arrived at b and how you arrived at c and then you'll know how you would arrive at D and it's much easier to get there. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.